guys, how is everyone? This is Airplane Mode, and I am here with the fourth video out of the series that will teach you guys how to start your Zippo 737-800 from cold and dark to shut down at your gate. Our last video covered the overhead panel checks, and today I'll be covering the EFIS and MCP panels. This will be a very short but very necessary video. So without wasting more time, let's get on with the tutorial. Alright guys, we are in the Zippo 737-800, and you can go down to your EFIS panel. Once you're down there, you can check to see that your minimums reference selector is set to radio or barrow. In my case, it's set to radio, so therefore you're just fine. Then you want to see that your minimum selector is set to your decision height. If it is not, then find the destination elevation and add 200. In my case, Bellingham is 170 feet above sea level, so you can add 200, which will make it 370. To change this, just simply turn the knob right to gain altitude, and turn the knob left to lose altitude. After that's complete, then you can check to see that your meter switch is as needed. I don't prefer to use it as I don't think it really adds much to the simulator itself, but you can do whatever you want. Your barrel reference selector should be in slash HPA, in my case it is set to A, and therefore we are okay. You want your barrel selector to be set to the altimeter, which we covered in the last video, and you should have done that. If you didn't already set your altimeter, you can simply hit the M key, and load your map, your map loads, you can simply zoom into your aircraft, hit right next to your aircraft, details, and scroll down to you find your altimeter. Now it is 2 niner, niner 2 Please make note that altimeter changes over time. Last video it was 2986, and now it is 2992. To change this, once again, simply turn this knob to gain your altimeter. Turn this knob to lose your altimeter. After it's set, continue on with the checks. Simply make sure that your VOR switches are set as they need to be. In my case, they are both set to off, and that's just fine. You want your mode selector to be set to map, unless you are stepping the plan to check how your legs are going throughout the flight. After that's complete, you want to check that your center switch is as needed. I turn it off because I don't like all of this stuff. I think it makes it look crowded and a little bit confusing for your route. So you can leave it on, which will give you some waypoints and some airports. But in my case, I'm going to be shutting it off. You want to see that your range selector is about 20 nautical miles out. I do this only for departure and arrival and change it to 40 when I reach cruising altitude. You can set this to whatever you would like, but I'm going to set it to 20. After that is complete, you can check to see that your traffic switch is as required. In my case, I'm not going to be using ATC and therefore it is not required. Now moving on to your MCP, which is right there in the front of the frame. To start off, check that your auto throttle, which is right here, is armed. Then, check that your speed is set to V2. If you don't know how to do this, go down to your FMC, hit init ref, and you'll be greeted with takeoff ref. If you're not, get index, performance, and one limit, and takeoff, and you'll be greeted with the same page. In my case, my V2 speed is set to 137. To figure out the speed that you're going to add, to your MCP panel, simply add 20 to that. So 137 plus 20 equals 157. So that is what I'm sending to the MCP panel. Your speed is set. You can move down to the LMAP. Simply click that and it will tell your computer where to fly. After you're done setting the speed, you can put the heading for the departure runway that you will be using. Runway 10 left at Portland is 103.3. So you can round that to 100. After that's complete, you can finally put in your initial altitude. I don't prefer to do this, I just prefer to set in my cruising altitude directly. So you can press and hold until you reach your cruising altitude, in my case, which is 20,000 feet. That's going to wrap up this short but very necessary tutorial on the EFIS panel and FCP panel. I hope this helped you out, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. As always, I will be seeing you guys on the next